Changes in hit and run law there is now a provision for strict punishment under BNS 10 years imprisonment along with a fine of rupees 7 lakhs India made a record by performing mass surya namaskar performance event registered in Guinness book of records thousands of people did surya namaskar in Modhera Sun temple India joins SKAO project the largest radio telescope will be designed under the project the aim is to solve the mystery of galaxy formation ISRO launches ExpoSat satellite this is India's first x-ray polarimeter satellite India became the second country after America to do so and Eurasian otter found for the first time in Kerala found in Chinnar wildlife sanctuary this species is native to Eurasia Nowadays protests by truck drivers are in the news across the country These protests are taking place against the provisions given in the Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita. In fact, in this legal framework, changes have been made in the punishment for hit and run incidents. However, after government assurance, the truck drivers have ended their protest. Since many provisions have been changed in the Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita, according to which if someone causes the death of any person by rash and negligent driving then it comes under the category of culpable homicide apart from this if he runs away without informing the police officer or magistrate immediately after the incident then he will be punished with imprisonment the maximum punishment is 10 years imprisonment which can be extended further besides the accused will also have to pay a fine of up to rupees 7 lakh whereas in ipc that is indian penal code The punishment for such crimes was limited to 2 years of imprisonment. It is noteworthy that three new criminal court bills have been approved by President Draupadi Murmu. These new laws are the Bharatiya Nyaya Sahita Bill, the Bharatiya Nagrik Suraksha Sahita Bill and the Bharatiya Sakshya Bill which will replace the Indian Penal Code, Criminal Procedure Code and the Indian Evidence Act of 1872 respectively. As per the sources rules for the CAA that is Citizenship Amendment Act 2019 will be officially released before the declaration of the Lok Sabha elections to be held in 2024 it is also said that once the rules are issued this law can be implemented let us tell you that the Citizenship Amendment Act of 2019 amends the Citizenship Act of 1955 It aims to provide Indian citizenship to illegal immigrants from Afghanistan, Bangladesh and Pakistan. These immigrants include people from Hindu, Sikh, Buddhist, Jain, Parsi and Christian communities. However, citizenship will be granted only to those immigrants who have entered India on or before December 31st, 2014. According to the Citizenship Act 1955 there are several provisions for eligibility for citizenship one of these is that the person must have been living in India for at least 11 years whereas in the 2019 amendment that period has been reduced to 5 years for immigrants let us tell you that in part 2 of the Indian Constitution articles 5 to 11 have mentioned about citizenship However it does not contain permanent and detailed provisions rather it recognizes only those people who became citizens of India at the time the constitution came into force it empowers the parliament to make laws for matters related to citizenship in this sequence parliament has implemented the citizenship act 1955 this act sets five conditions for obtaining citizenship this includes birth descent registration naturalization and territorial incorporation Recently the central government has declared an organization called Tehreek-e Hurriyat as an unlawful association it has been declared unlawful under the unlawful activities prevention act 1967 it is noteworthy that the unlawful activities prevention act 1967 was created 
to prevent activities that threaten the sovereignty and unity of India. This act will apply to those persons or organizations who promote activities that violate the territorial integrity and sovereignty of the country. Under this act, the central government can declare any organization as a terrorist organization. Let us tell you that UAPA 1967 has been amended by the Unlawful Activities Prevention Amendment Bill 2019. The objective of this amendment is to facilitate quick investigation and prosecution of terrorist crimes. Through this bill, strict action can be taken against terrorist activities against India. Also, this amendment allows declaring someone a terrorist only on the basis of proper and sufficient evidence. In this amendment, International Convention for the Suppression of Acts of Nuclear Terrorism 2005 has been included in the second schedule. Recently, earthquake tremors of 7.5 magnitude have been felt in the western coastal region of Japan, due to which there has been loss of life, property, and economic loss in the area. The Japanese government has issued a tsunami warning immediately after the earthquake was felt. Let us tell you that earthquake is a natural phenomenon, which means shaking of the earth in which seismic waves are generated due to the energy emission from inside the earth. These waves travel in all directions and shake the earth. The intensity of earthquake is measured by seismograph. The place where an earthquake starts is called the hypocenter, whereas the place located above the earth's surface, where the seismic waves reach first, is called the epicenter. Earthquakes are categorized into fault zone, tectonic earthquakes, volcanic earthquakes, human-induced earthquakes. India has been divided into four seismic zones on the basis of earthquakes and the risk arising from them, in which it is divided into zone 2, zone 3, zone 4, and zone 5. Let us tell you that tsunamis are huge waves generated due to earthquakes or volcanic eruptions under the sea. Tsunami waves can move as fast as jet planes in deep water. At the same time, when it reaches shallow water, its speed slows down. However, these are destructive waves. Most incidents of tsunami are observed in the Pacific Ocean in the world. The agreement related to lithium deal between India and Argentina has reached its final stage. This agreement is being signed between Kabil, that is Khanij Bidesh India Limited, and Camien, miner of Argentina. This includes the potential acquisition and development of five odd lithium blocks. At the same time, Khanij Bidesh India Limited has entered into a non-disclosure agreement with Chilean miner Inami. The objective of this agreement is for possible exploration, extraction, processing, and commercialization of minerals. It is noteworthy that Khanij Bidesh India Limited is a state-owned company under the Ministry of Mines, Government of India. Let us tell you that lithium is a chemical element. It is considered to be the lightest metal and lowest density solid substance in nature. From the chemical perspective, it is a member of alkali metal group. It reacts rapidly with other substances. Lithium is found naturally in various minerals which include spodumene, petalite, and lepidolite. It is commonly used as a key component in smartphones, laptops, electric vehicles, and rechargeable batteries. It is noteworthy that the top producing countries of lithium are Australia, Chile, China, and Argentina. However, Chile has the world's largest lithium reserves. Let us tell you that in the year 2023, an estimated huge reserve of 5.9 million tons of lithium has been discovered in Jammu and Kashmir, India. At the same time, additional lithium reserves have been discovered in Koderma and Giridhi areas of Jharkhand. India is dependent on lithium imports to meet most of its needs, manufacturing of lithium-ion batteries and other energy reserves. Recently, Gujarat's largest performance of Surya Namaskar has been included in the Guinness Book of World Records. This program was organized at Modhera Sun Temple in Gujarat. It saw active participation from various groups including local families, students, yoga enthusiasts, and senior citizens. Let us tell you that Surya Namaskar is an activity of yoga. It includes 12 postures synchronized with breath. It pays homage to the sun which is the source of life and energy in many cultures. This practice provides mental peace along with physical benefits. 
with its regular practice balance is maintained between mind body and spirit it is noteworthy that modhera sun temple is a protected monument by the archaeological survey of india it was constructed in 1026 to 27 ad it was constructed during the reign of bhim one of the solanki dynasty this temple complex is divided into three parts it includes gudha mandap the shrine hall sabha mandap the assembly hall and kund the reservoir the temple complex is built in maru gurjara architectural style it is also known as solanki style historians believe that this temple was built by bhim one in defense of modhera against mahmud ghaznavi it has been included in the tentative list of unesco world heritage sites Recently India has joined the SKAO that is square kilometer array observatory project. This project will function as the world's largest radio telescope. Apart from India, some of the countries participating in the creation of SKAO include UK, Australia, South Africa, Canada, China, France, Italy and Germany. It is noteworthy that SKAO is not a single telescope but a series of thousands of antennas. It will be installed in remote radio quiet locations in South Africa and Australia. Through this astronomical events will be observed and studied. The purpose of this telescope is to study a series of phenomena that extend up to more than 3000 trillion kilometer deep into the universe. This will help in solving the puzzles of creation and destruction of galaxies. Also new types of gravitational waves can be discovered through this. Whereas if we talk about SKAO it was established as an intergovernmental organization in the year 2021 SKAO is a new intergovernmental organization dedicated to radio astronomy the headquarters of this organization is in britain this organization includes countries like australia canada china india italy new zealand south africa sweden netherlands and the uk Recently ISRO has successfully launched ExpoSat that is X-ray polarimeter satellite mission. It was launched from Sri Harikota by PSLV C58 launch vehicle. It has been placed in Earth's orbit at an altitude of 650 km with an inclination of 6 degrees. ExpoSat is ISRO's first X-ray polarimeter satellite. After this successful launch, India has become the second country in the world after America to send such a satellite. The satellite will provide information about astronomical objects like black holes and its life span will be about 5 years. It is noteworthy that ExpoSat is ISRO's first dedicated scientific satellite. Along with this, it is an important satellite for research on X-ray emission from cosmic sources and measurement of polar angle. It consists of two payloads named Pollux that is polarimeter instrument in X-rays and Accessspect that is X-ray spectroscopy and timing. Let us tell you that Pollux has been made by Raman Research Institute and Accessspect has been made by U Rao Satellite Center. The Pollux payload is world's first instrument designed for moderate X-rays in the 8 to 30 kilo electron volt energy band. The Accessspect payload is designed to operate at fast timing and high spectroscopic resolution in the soft X-ray energy band. It will observe a variety of sources such as x-ray pulses, black hole binaries, low magnetic field neutron stars, active galactic nuclei and magnetars. Recently the researchers at Guwahati University have developed a new formalin sensor. According to researchers, this sensor can detect formalin adulteration in fishes. Actually nanoparticle like graphene has been used in this sensor to detect formalin in fish. This sensor is made of metal oxide nanoparticles reduced graphene oxide. It is designed to be low cost, non-invasive and selective. It works at normal room temperature. It can be used to prevent food adulteration and protect consumers. It is noteworthy that formaldehyde is used to make food items look more attractive and to increase their shelf life. Let us tell you that formaldehyde is a colorless flammable gas with pungent odor. which is used in various industrial processes also it is used in preserving food items it is used extensively in fish preservation especially in developing countries however formaldehyde is a known carcinogen that is cancer causing element due to this there is a ban on its use in many countries let us tell you that graphene is a two dimensional form of crystalline carbon in this a layer of carbon atoms arranged in a hexagonal lattice is found 
it is considered to be the world's thinnest strongest and most conductive substance of heat it is about 200 times stronger than steel and 6 times lighter it is used in sectors like defense and aerospace batteries and supercapacitors automotive etc Recently a mammal species named Eurasian otter has been discovered for the first time in Kerala. This mammal has been found in the Chinnar wildlife sanctuary of Idukki. The Eurasian otter is a carnivorous mammal native to Eurasia. However, it is found from Ireland to China and Southeast Asia. This is one of the palearctic mammal species. Its scientific name is Luthra luthra. Its body length ranges from 102 to 138 cm. The habitat of this species can be in rivers, lakes, freshwater and marshy forest, sea coast, paddy fields, caves, etc. At the same time in India it is found in cold hills and mountain rivers. On one hand it is included in the IUCN red list as near threatened, on the other it has been listed in schedule 2 under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972. Also it is protected under appendix 1 of sites. Let us tell you that Chinnar Wildlife Sanctuary is located in the rain shadow area of the Western Ghats. Indira Gandhi Wildlife Sanctuary is situated in its northern part and Iravikulam National Park is situated in its southern part. It is home to wide range of flora including deciduous forest, dry thorny bushes, coastal forest, shola and grasslands. Besides a wide area of sandalwood forest is also found near the sanctuary. About 1000 species of flowers and various types of medicinal plants are the main features of this area. The major species of plants found here include Acacia arabica, Acacia leucofloia, Santalum album, Rhododendron, Nilagiricum, Elaeocarpus etc. It is the habitat of the endangered Indian great grizzled squirrel. Recently a large number of sardine fishes were seen near the coast of Goa. Experts have described it as a rare phenomenon which is being called sardine run. Actually these fish come to the coastal area with the sea waves. At the same time the migration of sardines is affected by the fall or rise in sea water temperature. Let us tell you that sardine belongs to Clupidae of herring family in which herring clupia herringus and other small herring fishes are known as sardines. Mainly it is used as seafood. This species is found in oceans, seas and other bodies of water throughout the world. It is small in size and silver in color which have a small dorsal fin. They generally migrate along the sea coast. It is considered to be the main source of omega-3 fatty acids which helps in maintaining good heart health. Let us tell you that phytoplankton are microalgae which are similar to terrestrial plants due to the presence of chlorophyll. These are usually found in the upper part of the sea where sunlight is present. They are capable of converting inorganic nutrients into proteins, fats and carbohydrates. Its two main classes are dinoflagellates and diatoms. According to a recently released report, the National Commission for Women has registered more than 28,000 complaints of crimes against women in the year 2023. Complaints of dowry harassment, molestation, police apathy against women and rape and attempt to rape have been registered. Of these complaints about 55% have been registered in Uttar Pradesh. According to the statistics maximum 8540 complaints have been received in the category of right to dignity. After this more than 6000 complaints of domestic violence have been registered. It is noteworthy that according to the data received maximum 16109 complaints have been registered in Uttar Pradesh followed by 2411 in Delhi and 1343 in Maharashtra at the same time fewer complaints have been registered in states like Bihar Madhya Pradesh Haryana Rajasthan Tamil Nadu West Bengal etc however a decline in the number of complaints has been observed after the year 2022 Let us tell you that National Commission for Women is a statutory body of the Government of India. It was established in January 1992 under the National Commission for Women Act 1990. This commission advises the government on all policy matters affecting women. Its objective is to represent women's rights in India. Also the issues and problems related to them have to be resolved. It investigates cases of complaints by women who are victims of violence, discrimination, harassment or are deprived of their rights. Jayanti Patnaik was the first chairperson of the National Commission for Women 
presently the chairperson of the 9th National Commission for Women is Rekha Sharma. After the news, now let's take a look at five questions related to the bulletin. Questions based on today's bulletin are first question is consider the following statements with reference to the Citizenship Amendment Act 2019. One, it amends the Citizenship Act 1955. Two, it provides Indian citizenship to immigrants from China, Sri Lanka, and Pakistan. Which of the above statements is or are incorrect? Only one, only two, both one and two, or neither one nor two. Next question is consider the following statements with reference to the Eurasian otter. One, it is a carnivorous mammal native to Eurasia. Two, its length ranges from 200 to 300 centimeters. Three, it is protected under Appendix 1 of sites. How many of the above statements are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. Next question is consider the following statements with reference to lithium. One, it is the lightest metal in nature. Two, it is a member of the alkali metal group. Three, Australia is the largest producer of lithium. How many of the above statements are correct? Only one, only two, all three or none. Next question is consider the following statements with reference to the Square Kilometer Array Observatory project. One, it is the world's largest radio telescope project. Two, it will be established mainly in America. Three, India is not a part of this project. How many of the above statements are incorrect? Only one, only two, all three or none. Last question is consider the following statements with reference to the X-ray polarimeter satellite mission. 1. It was launched by PSLV C-57 launch vehicle. 2. It is ISRO's first X-ray polarimeter satellite. 3. India became the first country to send such a satellite. How many of the above statements are incorrect? Only one, only two, all three or none. Recently, the joint military exercise Desert Cyclone 2024 between India and the United Arab Emirates has started. This exercise is being conducted in Rajasthan from 2nd to 15th January. The armies of India and United Arab Emirates have participated in it. The objective of this exercise is to learn best practices and enhance interoperability between the two armies. Also, its aim is to establish bilateral cooperation in the defence sector between the two countries. Let us tell you that the first India-UAE Joint Air Force exercise was held in Al Dafra, Abu Dhabi in September 2008. Recently, the central government has appointed former Vice Chairman of Niti Aayog Arvind Pangadia as the Chairman of the 16th Finance Commission. While Indian Administrative Service Officer Ritwik Ranjanam Pandey will be the Secretary of this Commission. Let us tell you that the 16th Finance Commission will recommend the distribution of net income of taxes between the Union and the States. It can also review and make appropriate recommendations on the financing of disaster management initiatives in the context of funds constituted under the Disaster Management Act 2005. It has been started for a period of five years from April 1, 2026. Let us tell you that the Finance Commission is a constitutional institution. It is formed under Article 280 of the Constitution for five years. Recently, the Archaeological Survey of India has assured to send a note to UNESCO to include the Sri Mukhalingam Temple in the World Heritage List. Let us tell you that Sri Mukhalingam Temple is situated on the banks of the river Vanshudhara in Andhra Pradesh. It was built in the 9th century by the kings of the Eastern Ganga dynasty. It is built in Kalinga architectural style and is dedicated to Lord Shiva. There are three ancient temples, Madhukeshwar, Someshwar and Bhimeshwar at one place. Recently, Himachal Pradesh government has issued a notification granting scheduled tribe status to Hatti community. Let us tell you that on August 4, 2023, the government of India had notified the constitution scheduled tribes order Second Amendment Act 2023 in the Gazette to give scheduled tribe status to the Hatti community. It is noteworthy that the Hatti is a close-knit community. Its members have been making a living by selling their products like vegetables, crops, meat and wool, etc in the hearts set up in the towns. Among them, men traditionally wear a distinctive white headgear during ceremonial occasions such as weddings, religious or other social functions. Their habitat extends up to 
the Himachal Uttarakhand border in the valley of Giri and Tones rivers. Recently, Jammu and Kashmir has become the first union territory to implement PM Vishwakarma scheme. It started with the training program of the first batch of 30 trainees in Darzi crafts. The objective of this initiative is to strengthen and advance the skills of the craftsmen community. Let us tell you that PM Vishwakarma Yojana was started by the central government in September 2023. This scheme provides a certificate and ID card to promote artisans and craftsmen. Under this scheme, basic training of 5 to 7 days and advanced training of 15 days or more is given. Besides, trainees are also given a stipend of Rs 500 per day. Whereas a free modern toolkit worth, Rs 15,000 is given to trained Vishwakarmas. Recently, a new species of silver-lined butterflies has been discovered in the ancient hills of Megha Malai in the Western Ghats. The species has been named Cigaritis megamalensis after the Megha Malai region. It has been discovered for the first time in the biodiversity hotspot of the Western Ghats after three decades. At the same time, seven species of cigarettes are found in the Western Ghats. These include C. volcanus, C. schistacea, C. ictis, C. elima elima, C. lohita lazularia, C. lilacinus, C. abnormis, etc. Let us tell you that for the first time in the year 2018, researchers had seen specific species belonging to the cigarettes genus in the Periyar Hills. Recently, five new members have been officially included in the BRICS groups. This information has been shared by Russia, which is chairing the BRICS group this year. Now, this group has become an organization of 10 countries including Egypt, Ethiopia, Iran, Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates as new members. Let us tell you that till now only India, Russia and China, South Africa and Brazil were included in the BRICS. It is noteworthy that BRICS is a group of developing countries of the world. Recently, India has started its four-year term as a member of the United Nations Statistical Commission. The United Nations Statistical Commission, established in 1946, is a supreme body of the global statistical system. It brings together chief statisticians from member countries around the world. It is also the highest decision-making body for international statistical activities. It is responsible for the establishment of statistical standards and their implementation and development activities at national and international level. This commission includes 24 member countries of the United Nations who are elected by the United Nations Economic and Social Council on the basis of equal geographical distribution. Recently, World Braille Day 2024 was celebrated. This day is celebrated every year on 4th January all over the world. It is celebrated in honor of Louis Braille, the inventor of Braille script. Let us tell you that Louis Braille was born in France in the year 1809. He played an important role in development of the Braille script, due to which the United Nations had announced to celebrate World Braille Day on January 4. It is noteworthy that Braille script is a universal code rather than a language. It serves as a tool for people with disabilities to read and write in various languages, including Sanskrit, Arabic, Chinese, Hebrew, Spanish and many other languages.